Good morning, good morning. Welcome to all of you to this time of worship and song, praise and prayer and confirmation um, and blessing. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is uh, Reverend Nancy Taylor. I am the one who has the joy and privilege to serve this church as pastor, teacher, preacher. Um, we say here in this congregation and in churches around the United Church of Christ that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, and the last two years, no matter how you are participating in this worship service, in the life of this church, you are welcome here. We do, uh, as you may have noticed, we have announcements before the service, and if you miss them, um, they will also uh, be showing at the end of the service. So please do take note of what's going on within the congregation and in the larger community. And this morning, I'd like to start by asking uh, Kathy Willie to come forward. She has a moment of mission uh, on behalf of the church council. I'm going to ask Toby to come up and join me. <clears throat> As some of you know, this last week, um, we kicked off our beginning of the uh, FCC generosity program. And today, um, the council, on behalf of this congregation, wants to offer some generosity to Reverend Nancy. Um, as many of you know, this week starts Reverend Nancy's sabbatical, and so we wanted to send her off with some gifts. Surprise person, why don't you? <laughs> First, we are aware that as part of your time away, you're going to explore the depths in the con of the concept of Sabbath, which we know means a day of religious observance and abstinence from work. So we wanted to make your abstinence from work as comfy, cozy as possible. Slippers. There are two. <laughs> so we're also aware that you and Shay enjoy working on your home. So included in this envelope is a gift card for a kitchen file. Oh, kitchen file. <laughs> um, all right, well, if that wasn't fun enough, we also want you to have some fun, so also some mad cash in the envelope to do whatever your heart directs you to do. So we send you forth with our love and support. Thank you. Just a little quick background on the squeal about Kits and File. I first encountered this church in person um, five and a half years ago, a little bit more, uh, September, early September, and I met people in the parking lot and they came, we came to the front door. And before we came into the building, I looked out across the street and I could not contain my glee that there was a hardware store <laughs> right there. <laughs> so that was the first clue this might be the church. And then the search committee took me on a tour of the building and in, down into the catacombs, and there was a drill press and I think and a chop saw. It's like, this, these people are my kind of people. <laughs> so that was part of what the squeal was about. Thank you, this is most unexpected, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Back to an uh, announcement or two. Um, please do note that on this extraordinary Sunday, I mean, please look around. We haven't had people in abundance in this space for over two years. It has been two years of challenge, two years of heartbreak, two years of loss. We have noted some of our losses in um, offerings we have put in the singing bowl. And 
we get the joy of gathering, not simply on any Sunday, but on Confirmation Sunday. So I hope when the time comes, you are able to sing with full hearts and full voices, because it has been a long time since this space, this sacred space, has been blessed with many, many voices singing. I do want to note before we move into our um, time of worship that the memorial service and celebration of life for Tom Arndt, longtime FCC member Tom Arndt, will be this Thursday, the 31st, at 3 o'clock. Visitation will begin at 1.30, and we will have a reception after the service in Fellowship Hall. And so now, I invite you to join me in taking a deep breath. Let whatever hurry and worry shaped your morning, let it drift away. Let anything that is lying ahead for you later this day, let it rest, let it wait. And as the sound of the singing bowl fills our sanctuary, let it invite us more deeply into this time of worship so that we might receive and share the gifts of God's grace that the Holy One has prepared for us. And now I invite Emmy Reichenberger forward to light not only our peace candle, but our other candles. With prayers for peace in our hearts and peace and healing in our world, we light this candle. Thank you. And now I invite you to rise if it's comfortable for you to do so and remain where you are and share the signs and the motions and the expressions of peace with one another. Don't forget those who are watching online, may the peace of God be with you. Peace, peace. Now, if it's comfortable for you to do so, I invite you to remain standing as we sing our first hymn. In the hymnal, it is number 53, but you can also uh, sing with the lyrics on the screen. <coughs>
Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, we gather this morning on a chilly, bright day to give thanks to you, to celebrate your presence in our midst and your gift of these young people whom we will confirm this day. Be our guide and guardian in all things. Wrap us in your mercy. Lead us with your vision of justice and peace. And remind us again and again and again that you love us beyond our ability to imagine, and that you love everyone else just as much. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Second Corinthians 5, 16 through 20. From now on, therefore, we regard no one <clears throat> from a human point of view. <clears throat> Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we no longer know him in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to God's self through Christ and had given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to God's self, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making this appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. 1 John 4, 7 through 8, and 11 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us.
Amen and amen. When we're baptized, our parents, our godparents, our extended family, the church, honors God's claim on us. We grow, we hope, in love and hope and faith. Always, always claimed by God. Loved into existence, claimed, and then given this ministry of reconciliation. It's a long word, but it is a word that speaks well of this group of confirmation students. These five we will soon confirm in their journey of faith. This is a group of young people who are rooted in love, who have great senses of humor, who are thoughtful, who are at times silly, there is something special that shines through them, that seeks to shine through each and every one of us. Some newness, some bursting forth of love, of energy, of this desire to see all of us, all of creation, cared for, honored, respected, Tended. The Apostle Paul is so right. I read this first line and I honestly think of these confirmands. From now on, we regard no one from a human point of view. What is this human point of view that we're invited out of? We are invited out of seeing someone else and deciding are they against us, are they for us. We are invited out of seeing someone as other in any way, shape, or form. We are invited to see them through the eyes of the heart, through God's eyes, and see this wondrous creation, no more perfect than any one of us is or ever will be but beloved, and we are given this sight, we are made new over and over again in our walk with Jesus so that we can see and love through something beyond, deeper and wider, greater than human love, than the human point of view. You don't need me to tell you that this nation and this world are in dire need of a ministry of reconciliation. We are invited to join these confirmands in renewing our sense, our willingness to be God's people in the world, realizing that that doesn't give us all the answers, but instead, embracing the invitation over and over and over again to be rooted in love, not the mushy, squishy, sentimental, saccharine kind of love, but the kind of love that is rooted in courage, the kind of love that is willing to tell the truth, never, never failing to see God's beloved no matter whom we are speaking to, no matter whom we are describing. These young people, as we confirm them, are in some ways early on their journeys, but in a variety of ways, these are young people who have learned a lot about life. They, too, have lived through two years of pandemic, they have had to adjust over and over again in how they do things. And I want to testify that God is at work in them, 
shining through, laughing when they are silly, rejoicing when they are generous with their time, their spirits, their visions, their love for one another. This is a blessed, glorious day. I give thanks, and I trust you join me, giving thanks that we are able to be here to witness this confirmation, to make our own promises and offer blessings to these five young people. Amen and amen. As we move into our confirmation time, I invite you to rise if it's comfortable for you to do so. We sing, I was there to hear your morning cry. It's number 75 in your hymnal if you'd like to use your hymnal. And now I invite the confirmation students and their faith par partners to come forward, and you may all otherwise be seated. <laughs> good morning, you all. I've said good morning a few times, but... It's great to see you up here, the real deal. Andrew, Charlotte, Ava, Daya, Talon, it is a joy to be welcoming you today as full members of the First Congregational Church of Oshkosh. This congregation joins your families in celebrating your journey of faith, and we pray that you will find a joy in the questions and grace at every point along the road. May the love and grace of God surround, support, and sustain you as you grow in faith, hope, love, and service. This life and journey of faith are not meant to be static. 
So I trust that you will continue to explore, to question, and to discover more and more of who you are as beloved people of God. On this day, we take a moment to celebrate what you've discovered thus far. Now today, your faith may be full of confidence and conviction, or may be full of doubts and questions, or perhaps, probably, it is a mixture of all these things. That is good and healthy. Our faith community, this congregation, these people who have known you for most, if not all, of your lives support you and join you in your journeys. And now, knowing that faith can be a never-ceasing exploration with many twists and turns, we ask that you to pause today in your spiritual journey to confirm the faith you hold. We ask. We ask that you commit yourself to continue to being a pilgrim on a spiritual journey, seeking truth wherever it may be found, honoring the journeys of those who travel with you, and learning from others, from the scriptures, and from your own exploration as you seek to live in the love and the power of God. If you are ready to make this commitment, please say, I will, with the help of God. And now I invite Jenna and Daya forward. Introduce Daya. All right, so I'm going to introduce Daya. Daya is one of the most amazing human beings I know. And lucky enough to be not just the mother, but also the faith partner. So I'm going to let our words as parents be the further, further, um, Blessing to Daya. From your parents, Daya, you shine. With each new day, you continue to amaze us with your growing love, compassion, strength, kindness, and individuality. You feel so deeply, you give so freely, you love so unconditionally. Your smile, laughter, and pizzazz light up every space. We love that you challenge the world to be more inclusive and compassionate. You make us, your family, and the community better. We cherish every part of you and are so blessed to be walking the path of life with you. Confirmation is a piece of the journey of spirituality. It provides the stepping stones to walk or leap from, helping to guide you to who you are, how you learn, and how you respond to the world around you. As you step further into faith, may you always remember to be filled with wonder, to seek knowledge, to believe in yourself, and to live in awe of the beauty and magic of the world. You are named for a forest of giant redwoods. This forest is where, forest is where your spirituality began. Forests like this have thrived and transformed for thousands of years, just like this forest you have helped us transform. Just like this forest, you will thrive and transform many times over in your lifetime. Spirituality is not something that is created in one day. It is created over a lifetime. It is not the same for every person. Be creative and deliberate in the path you seek. Make it a journey. And remember that as you continue your journey, you are always, we are always here with you and always will be your strongest supporters. We love you always. You are amazing. Continue to let the phenomenal light of you shine. Now, would you please place Daya's stole? But first, Daya. And now, Charlotte and Emily, if you would come forward. I'm pleased to introduce, pleased to introduce Charlotte Selfloo. And I have a cord. All righty. <laughs> Charlotte, from your mom and dad. We want you to know how much we love you on this special day. Sometimes we describe the four of you as the oldest child, the middle child, and the twins, but we don't put stock in those labels. 
We have always, always thought of you as a favorite Christmas present because you were conceived at Christmas and you became the long-awaited sister that we all wanted in our lives. When we look at you, we see a person whose character emerged at a very young age. You were outgoing and confident. That is why Grandma Carol called you Miss Congeniality when you were little. You have always blossomed around people and made them happy. When people visited, you were eager to grab your violin and play the fiddle tunes you had learned. It became obvious to us that this was not for your own benefit, but because you saw how much pleasure it gave to other people. Your interest in music has turned to real dedication. Your compassion for others continues to grow. We know that you have enjoyed confirmation class, and we are happy to see you officially joining the FCC community. When Olivia was considering confirmation, we talked many times about the idea of community and its importance in a person's life. We see that you have a great understanding of this and use it to guide your decisions. You are loved at FCC. This community has helped you build a foundation that will lead to a happy and fulfilling life based on the teachings of Jesus. We hope you continue to show his love and compassion to the world as you have been doing since you were so small. Love, Mom and Dad. Talon and Deborah. It is exciting to be here. Diversity is our strength, and these talented young people are all gifted in different ways that will make the church better and stronger. We are all so proud of all of you. Every day, if we're looking, we may see a serendipitous gift from God come our way. I got such a gift a few years ago while volunteering at the Christmas cookie fundraiser when I bumped into this bright soul. We each naturally gravitated to guaranteeing the highest quality product, regardless of the great personal sacrifice on our parts, and of course, strictly out of concern for the well-being of <laughs> others. <laughs> of course. Through shared humor, we ensured no substandard cookie passed our inspection, and we had a great time together doing it. <laughs> Throughout the years, I have learned more of this bright soul's warm and caring personality and heart of service. I learned he likes to play the guitar. He is on the theater crew and ski club at school. He travels to Michigan every summer to take, spend time with his relatives at the cabin. And he has already been whitewater rafting down the mighty Colorado River. I have learned this bright soul's mission of service extends beyond the walls of this church, out into the community, to prepare meals for families at Rodney's Cafe. And we all know, know during the confusing and frightening pandemic, this bright soul bravely came to church to make certain the rest of us had a broadcasted service. And I have personally come to appreciate his heart of kindness, and endless encouragement. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege <laughs> and honor to introduce to you Talon Booth. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Talon, from your mom and dad. Talon James. I didn't know your middle name was James. We introduced you to a life of worship, service, and prayer in hopes that one day you would embrace these very things on your own. That day has officially come. Our hearts are bursting with joy as you confirm your commitment here today. You are an incredible young man who continues to amaze us. We started this journey as your guides, but in reality, you are the one who has taught us so much. Do not think of today as a destination, but rather just the beginning of a fulfilling lifelong journey. With the Lord by your side, you are bound to do great things. We wait with great anticipation as your story unfolds. Continue to stay true to who you are. Hold fast to the Lord and your life of service, and we promise your cup will runneth over. 
We love you beyond measure, and so does the Lord. Always, Mom and Dad. Now, Ava and Sarah. I don't have a paragraph prepared, but um, this is my beautiful inside and out daughter, um, Ava. From your dad. Dearest Ava, congratulations on your confirmation. Since your mother was your faith partner, I've been tasked with creating this message. Your mother and I know this experience was challenging, but hopefully it allowed you to reflect on your life journey so far and express gratitude with the Lord's blessings. Equally as important, we hope you gained a better appreciation and understanding for other individuals' journeys. We could not be more proud of the character you have developed. The resilience and confidence you have shown at an early age will serve you well in an increasingly difficult world. The kindness and patience you show others is remarkable and something we can all learn from. Your ability, ability to listen, reflect, and thoughtfully respond to various challenges and experiences is beyond your years. Your intelligence and sense of humor are unparalleled. As you age and become more independent, please remember my most cherished times with you are not the rare times like vacations, holiday gatherings, or notable life events like today. Instead, the time I value most with you are the everyday moments we share, like dinner conversations, sunset walks, or bike rides. Seeing your beautiful smile and hearing your laughter echo touches my soul like nothing I can describe. Finally, no matter how well you ever do in academics or athletics, nothing fills my heart more than when someone you have had contact with expresses how great a kid you are. The world needs more kind, empathetic, and open-minded people like you. Please continue to grow, share your gifts, and in impact people in a positive manner. Peace and love always, Daddy. Now I invite Andrew and Carol forward. Carol. Uh, I hope I can do this without crying. Come on closer to the mic. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to my grandson, Andrew Wiedemann. And I was so privileged and honored that I was asked to be his faith partner. And I just pray and wish for the compromise and Andrew and them to the best of luck in life and never forget that there is always God watching over you. Thank you. Now, Andrew, from your mom and dad. Andrew, we are very proud of you and your decision to accept guidance from the Lord in your journey through life. May he help you be an adult who is strong and compassionate while keeping the child within who tells jokes, plays video games, loves sports, and has fun with friends. Our prayer is that you will hold the Lord forever in your heart and stay strong in your faith as you navigate through life's challenges and celebrations. Your family loves you very much. Andrew, Ava, Talon, Charlotte, Daya. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the beauty and light that shine through you be your guides. And may you always receive the blessings of God, which you share so abundantly. Now I invite the congregation, if it's comfortable for you to do so, to rise as we offer our congregational blessing. Let us say, Andrew, Charlotte, Ava, 
Daya, and Talon. Beloved new members of this church, we give thanks for your presence in this congregation and in the world. We celebrate your gifts and your decision to continue your life of faith in this church. We promise to love and pray for you. We promise to honor your questions and your doubts and to share our own with you. May God bless and keep you always. Amen. And glory, hallelujah. Please be seated. Over the last couple of Sundays, we have all been given the chance to share what is weighing on our hearts share some of the grief and loss of these last two years. And so as we move into our time of prayer, I will ring the singing bowl and let its sound raise our needs, our hungers, and our heartaches to the one who is love. And let us then move into our time of prayer. Gracious God, everlasting love, you gather us together so that we might encounter you in ways that are not possible when we are alone. We gather together in awe of the thousands and millions of ways you shine forth, not only in the natural world, but in the very faces that we see in this sanctuary and in the mirror. On this glorious Sunday, O oh God, we do give thanks for the new life and new members in our midst. If anyone doubts that you are at work, all they need to do is to look at those whom we have just confirmed. Loving God, on this day we pray for your vision of shalom, true thriving of all people and all life. And we pray for an end to all those things that we do and others do that hinder your spirit, that block us from being the people you call us to be. Loving God, we have seen your work in Jesus. We encounter your work in the eternal Christ who is with us always. In Christ, we pray for the end of war, for healing beyond measure, for grace and delight and joy for all of creation. We give thanks that you have given us, Jesus, so that we can see what it looks like when someone trusts you in all things 
and who risks love no matter what the cost. So in thanksgiving for your gifts through him, we lift our voice in the prayer he taught his disciples so long ago as we say, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are here. Thanks to so many people who have made our lives possible. Thanks to so many people who have made this church possible. We too are called to give ourselves to the possibilities of God. And so as the morning's offering is given, I invite us all to make our own commitment to the God of love and to share generously so that this church and God's work may continue. Let us receive the offering. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Ever generous God, we celebrate your gift of life through this offering. We ask that you receive not only what we have placed in these plates, but also our less tangible gifts, our hearts, our spirits, our passion, and our resolve. In hope and trust in you, we pray. Amen. Please be seated, and now I invite Toby Vandenhoevel, our moderator, Vanessa Frank, our clerk, and sabbatical, soon-to-be sabbatical minister, Jacob Nault, forward.
So we'd like to send Nancy off with a, a blessing as she goes on her sabbatical. We wish you a time of being and not doing. We wish you a time of rest. May I be free to rest. We wish you a time of playfulness, whimsy, and delight. May I be free to play. We wish you a time to explore and be creative, to let yourself be immersed in something you've always wanted to learn. May I be free to learn. We wish you the joy of finding and welcoming a new dog into your life. May I know again the daily joy of loving and caring for a dog. May God bless you and keep you while you are apart. May God bless you and keep you while we are apart. Jacob, we welcome you to serve as FCC's sabbatical minister. We promise to work with you to love and to serve God by loving and serving God's creation. Jacob, with trust in the Holy Spirit's work in you, I give thanks for the ministry you will offer within this congregation. Jacob, may God bless you and keep you in your ministry here and elsewhere. Jacob, may God bless you and keep you in your ministry here and elsewhere. And Nancy, may, may God bless and you and keep you in your time of rest and renewal. We invite the congregation to rise and join in this blessing. Join in the prayer on the screen. May God bless you and keep you, Nancy, in the months ahead. May you find rest, renewal, and joy. We welcome you, Jacob, into the midst as our sabbatical minister. May God bless you and keep you, and may your ministry fill with joy, joy and the Holy Spirit. Blessings be upon you. <laughs> And now I invite you to remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, Shalom to You, number 436. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. Moon and stars pour their healing light on you. Deep peace of Christ to you. Amen. Amen.